and welcome to the Penguin Prof channel. Today's episode is By Popular Demand Decoding Basic Chemical Structures. Feel the power. So if you're a biology student, chances are you have a textbook with pages that look like this, where they give you these images that they think are helpful to you, but most biology books don't actually explain what these little hexagons mean. So it leaves students very confused and wondering, you know, what, what the heck is that supposed to be and how is that supposed to help me? By the end of this video, believe it or not, you are going to be able to write the chemical formula for this structure. Don't panic, I'm gonna bring out the hula penguin. So you need to recall bonding rules. And if you don't recall them or you've never been exposed to them, please check out my video on atomic bonds, my chemistry basics part two video. I will post that link in the description bar below. In that video, you're gonna see this slide, which is really key. And it shows you that the column number tells you how many valence electrons any given element has. And that's going to be the key to understanding how many bonds any element wants in order to be stable. So the bonding rules are really simple because if you look at the column numbers, you'll see that for hydrogen, hydrogen has one valence electron but would like to have two. So hydrogen is going to want to form one covalent bond. Carbon, on the other hand, has four valence electrons, would like to have eight. So carbon is going to be stable with four covalent bonds going to it. That's going to make carbon happy. Nitrogen right next door has five valence electrons, would like to have eight. So nitrogen needs three more bonds in order to be stable. And oxygen has six valence electrons, would like to have eight. So oxygen, I ran out of room, is going to want to look like this in order to be happy. So you've got to remember those bonding rules in order to be able to correctly draw and name structures. Now, organic chemistry has a lot of rules about naming things, but these rules actually help you as you try and name structures. There's codes for how many carbons are in a given chain. There's codes for whether or not there are single or double bonds. And this video really isn't gonna go through all of those. This video is more about how to understand what the basic structures mean. But just so you know, Things like butane, the name itself tells you what it is. That but means four carbons, and that A-N-E at the end tells you that there are no double bonds. But something like propene tells you there are three carbons in the chain with one double bond. So once you learn the rules, it's actually really cool and very powerful to be able to draw these things. But you're gonna see stuff like this and, and look at this and go, well, what the heck is this thing? Okay, there's two rules in addition to the bonding rules that you need to know. Rule number one, carbon lives on ends and bends. Rule number two, hydrogens bring carbon happiness. So let's look at this again. This is actually ethanol. Some of you may have some experience with ethanol. Okay, so the rule number one, carbon lives on ends and bends. What I mean by that is any bend in a chain means there is a carbon there. That is code for carbon. The end also implies a carbon. So that's rule number one. Hydrogens bring carbon happiness. So if you recall, carbon needs to have four bonds going to it in order to be stable. That's carbon's happy place. So when you look at these carbons, you can count the number of lines going to them and fill in the missing ones with hydrogens. So this carbon has only one covalent bond going to it, which means that it needs three hydrogens in order to be stable. This carbon already has two covalent bonds going to it, so it needs two. And now you're done. Now you can count up all the atoms, so sort of do a tally. Two carbons, six hydrogens, and one oxygen. So if you write that out in a linear fashion, C2H6O, that is the formula for ethanol. And by the way, the name ethanol actually tells you exactly what's in it. How convenient. Okay, let's look at another molecule. Uh, something a little bit more interesting. We're going to look at caffeine. Caffeine is a molecule that many people, especially students, absolutely cannot live without. The most popular stimulant on the planet. 
you might be curious to know, what the heck does it look like? Well, this is exactly what it looks like, and we're going to come up with the chemical formula for this thing, following the bonding rules and the two additional rules about carbon. Okay, you ready? So first of all, carbon is going to be at the ends and bends. So let's do all of the ends first. So here's the end of the line, that's a carbon. Here's another end of a line, that's a carbon. And here's another end of a line, that's also a carbon. And now we're going to fill in all the bends, the ones that don't have any nitrogens in them. We're going to fill those in with carbons too. So there's a carbon here. Here there's a nitrogen, so you don't fill that in. Here's another bend, there's a carbon. Here's another bend, there's a carbon. Here's another bend. And finally, another bend. So you see, everywhere the line bends, you put a carbon. And finally, now we get to fill in all of the empty spaces. Remember, carbon needs to have those four bonds going to it in order to be happy. We're going to fill those empty spots in with hydrogens. So this carbon only has one covalent bond going to it, so it's going to need three more hydrogens in order to be happy. These are all happy on the interior. They all have four lines going to them. This one doesn't, so we're going to need three hydrogens here. This one also uh, is missing one because it's only got three. Now he's got four. Now he's happy. And this one needs three as well. So now let's do a tally of atoms and come up with the chemical formula for caffeine. So if you count it all up, for the carbons, I've got 8. For the hydrogens, I've got 10. For nitrogens, I've got 4. And oxygens, I've got 2. And if you write that out in a linear fashion, you've got the chemical formula for caffeine. See, it's not so bad. Okay, ready for one more? Let's do one more. Let's do something else that students rely on a lot. Let's look at the structure of aspirin. Here is aspirin. We're going to write the chemical formula for aspirin. This is the one I showed you at the very beginning of the video and I promised you you would be able to do. And now hopefully you can see how easy this is. Let's do it. Okay, so we're going to start with carbon at the ends and the bends. So here we've got carbons at every bend. This is called an aromatic ring. Isn't it absolutely fabulous? And there's one bend right there. The only other spots we've got, there's a bend, and this is an end. So those are all the carbons. And now we're going to go back and fill in all the empty spaces around carbon with hydrogens. So this carbon is good, has four bonds going to it, as does this one. This one has three, needs one more. This one has three and needs one more. This one has three and needs one more. Do you see a pattern? This carbon here has four bonds going to it, so it is already happy. So does this carbon, and this one is terminal and needs three. All right, so now we've got all the carbons, all the hydrogens, we've got everybody, and now we can write the chemical formula for aspirin. If you do the tally, you've got nine carbons, eight hydrogens, and four oxygens. And there you have it, chemical formula for aspirin as promised and not even very painful. So now I hope you find that these structures mean something. That was really the goal of this video. It's not that complicated once you learn the basic rules. I don't even think we needed the hula penguin, but I'm just going to throw it in just in case you're a little bit overwhelmed. If you keep at it, these structures actually get a little bit charming. That's dopamine. Dopamine makes you feel good. It's the molecule of love and happiness. And I hope you find some love and happiness in your studies of chemistry. Sometimes you got to look hard, though. As always, I hope that was helpful. Thank you so much for visiting the Penguin Prof channel. Please show your support by clicking those buttons. Join on Facebook. Follow on Twitter. Good luck.